Ladies and gents, welcome to Crosshairs. Yes, that's right. Also, is there no king? Oh, there is a king. I missed it. Oh, the king started in the middle. The king started in the middle. How wonderful. This, to you later on YouTube, is just going to be one video. But this, to us here on the stream right now, is one game from a three-day event. As we have eight players out there with kings, and there's a lot of money on the line. It is regicide. It is diplomacy. You can see the players are sending their kings back home right now. And uh, it's going to be eventful. $250 for the winner. 250 big ones. $150 for second place. 100 for third place. And also $25 per king snipe. So there's a lot of money on the line. Let us do our introductions. In the blue, playing as the Koreans, we have Sony Toprano. A 2K1, 2K2 rated player, so top 100 player from Turkey. In the orange, we have Edub, a 1,000 ELO player who just got into this game because we needed a spot. Uh, Edub is playing as the Magyars. In the purple, we have Eli, not to be confused with Edub. This is a 1,900 rated player, so he's up there, who's been around my community for half a decade now. He's played in community games. He has a legend video, The Legend of Eli and Infoboat, though it's older. And he is going to fly under the radar of these other top 100 players, I can tell you. Because he's, he's, he's a bit out of that, but he's experienced. El Matador, top 100 player from Germany. You might recognize him from, I think, WWC, playing as the Tatars. And uh, the Teal, we've got Levi, otherwise known as Pella. He's an Argentinian player. I know there's a lot of Argentinians watching this. Because next to him is going to be, well, that's not Capoch, excuse me. Low Elo, nobody. Not the lowest ELO, actually. He's 1,500 ELO. Not bad. And then in the green, you've got Capoch. He's the other Argentinian. He is uh, someone who I wouldn't normally see playing in these settings, but I'm glad to see he signed up with the Berbers. And then MBL, the biggest name, no doubt about it, in this game. Good old MBL. One of my favorite players ever. One of my good friends in the game. His, uh, his personality... Can, can get you on either side. Sometimes he can annoy you. Sometimes he can make you laugh. He's very true to himself, and I'm curious on how he's going to either trust people or will people trust him. Now, shout out to Hazemi for making this map. This map is essentially Chaos Pit, which is a map seen in many tournaments. You start in the middle without access to any gold. You only have a little bit of stone, and then you have the food. Uh, no boars or anything either. So shout out to him for this idea. He made the crosshairs in the middle. He felt like it was only fitting for Regicide. And they do also start with a tower. We made the decision for players to always start with a tower if there was not a Nomad start. So they have the tower to keep themselves protected. At the bottom right, you can see that a lot of these players haven't really gone for the diplomacy moves. If there's a full circle that's lit up, that means that that color has allied and has been accepted the other color so like levi here he's allied with green he's allied with gray mbl you can pretty clearly see he's only allied with himself he has not set any alliances yet like we saw earlier today that is a big concern if players don't set alliances because it's a sign they might fight um edub thousand needle player all over it alliance is set people haven't accepted it and then low elo nobody 1500 set alliances people haven't accepted it so this is this is what's fun about Regicide Rumble. I'd love to get it to a point if the support's there and people are down for more action and the feedback's awesome. Where we do this more regularly so we could actually watch high ELO players learn Diplo more and like Diplo tricks and do some of the backstabbery stuff. So MBL once died to Blue Coffee. I'd just like to put that out there. He's probably really unhappy I'm bringing that up. But yes, he did, want, he did once die to Blue Coffee in one of Blue Coffee's Legend videos. And I believe the quote from Blue Coffee was, Die 11? Yeah, I think it was Die 11. I think that's what it was. Now, if you want access to gold on this map, you're going to have to cut through. And look at this from Sony Toprano. He has cut through. So he's got his scout. Now he's setting alliances. And he's looking for those resources. And we'll see what they find. If you're getting used to the capture age, the new capture age like I am, we don't have the age ups or anything here. So I think I'm going to have a talk with them tonight. It would be really good to have that, don't you think, guys? To see who's aging up on the side. 
Maybe a few techs, too, would be real nice. Um, I can, of course, check that if I click, but then I have to eliminate the table. So we're still... The big thing for us is we wanted the king alerts and the ability to follow the king and some of the other uh, functionalities. We're still getting used to what we can have up there. I'd like to have a toggle so I could show things there if I wanted to, but not have them there all the time. But, you know, you go around, you should expect with these vill counts that we're going to be seeing fast castles. And no real conversation yet. It's been very silent. Catwatch, though, is finally getting to his Diplo screen. And maybe what it is is when people ally themselves to a player, they then remember to ally to the player in return. So let's talk up uh, any outside reasons players might work together. So, in this game, we do have two high-level Argentinians. We have Levi, and we have Capoch. And, like, the Argentinian community is real tight, man. Like, even, even the viewers. I don't know how many people are watching from Argentina, but they've got passion, right? And so, it wouldn't surprise me if they would have sent a few messages to each other prior to this game. Like, hey, we have an opportunity. Let's work together. Now, you can't do any colluding, like, on Discord or anything like that. You got to talk only in the game. But ahead of time, I'm pretty certain that players, because I can't really enforce anything, are probably chatting a little bit. Now, so much so that when we needed to fill the final spot, which Edub took, Levi messaged me, and he's like, hey, I've got Beery. Beery can play, and Beery's an Argentinian player. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not giving you another ally, essentially. So yeah, we'll see what happens there. I mean, we did see the Brazilians turn on each other earlier. And here we have low elo nobody saying, yo, we good Eli. Or, or not Eli, sorry, Levi. Or Levi. God, do we really have Eli, Edub, and Levi in the same game? What is this? How, how do we have three names that are so similar? Jeez. Levi, Eli, and then Edub, yes. He couldn't just name himself Pela, which is what everyone knows him as. Okay, MBL has made it out. He has made it out. He's on his way to the next stage, I believe. Yep, he's on his way to Feudal. And MBL is allied to everyone except for Levi. But he has requested that. Levi has not responded yet. <laughs> Sounds like the Torny organizer needs a stern talking to. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> MBL declared war on Capoch. Oh, he did actually. Oh my god, a Capoch is attacking a villager. Wait, what? What happened there? I think Capoch declared war on MBL first to maybe kill a villager, and that's spicy because these are the two highest players in the game. You know MBL. You know he's he's gonna be stubborn. He's gonna remember that. A nice little quick gate there from MBL, and ha <laughs> your scout is trapped. This is the individual brilliance that we want to see from the high-level players in Capwatch. Now allies MBL. Let's see if MBL allies him back. There's a very short little uh, attempt there from Capwatch. I'd love to see MBL say something right now. That'd be funny. Hasn't said anything yet. MBL hasn't accepted it, so that, that bothers him. Edub did say MBL allies. So we, we didn't get a response there from MBL. Now you see the king for Capwatch heading to the outer ring. MBL not at all interested in being allies with Capwatch at the moment. Ray now chatting says, Capwatch and Levi, can we set up trade on back? Capwatch also declaring war again on MBL, probably because MBL did not accept the alliance. So he says, fine, I'll keep you as enemy. Like these guys are right next to each other. Hmm. Capoch and Levi, can we set up trade on the back? And Levi says yes, and Matador. So I think we might actually have our stack right now. Matador, Levi, Low Elo Nobody, and Capoch. This might play out like that. But like Eli hasn't been discussing things with anyone. MBL hasn't responded to Edub at all. And then you've got Sony Soprano going for a big boom, but again, very little discussion. So I think low elo nobody 
he, he's a very chatty individual on streams. I remember him, you know, watching streams all the time. Very active on forums and such. He's been the more diplomatic one, which would make sense. El Matador is a 2K1 German player. So I mistakenly called Spanish <laughs> in a recent event. Apologies if I confused anyone with that. Okay, so let's talk civs for a second. So Edub says perp friends. I like that. Good communication. But let's talk civs. I don't like Sicilians. I really don't think Sicilians are a great civ. They don't get Paladin. They do get Siege Onager, I guess, but it's weird to me that Eli would pick Sicilians because of when he got to pick his civ. He got to pick his civ third, I think. Feels like there would have been a lot of other civs available there. Like, I think he would have been able to pick Mongols, for example. I love the Mongols. I think Mongols is number one here. They've got the Siege. They've got the Mangadai. They've got the Hussars. That's insane. MBL's king on the move, just running up here. Bohemians, I do like as well for MBL. Again, they have a similar problem. They lack Paladin. But with Hufnitze and Halbs, they are a bit slower, but I could see MBL getting the better of a lot of players out here. Now you've got Koreans. Koreans are top tier in these games. If they have the time, Koreans can devastate. They can play defensively with their keeps and towers. And then they have Siege Onager, and they have the War Wagon. So just high HP, tanky, tanky units. Magyars, I actually think, are an underrated pick. I know some people are going to be like, Boo! Magyars are awesome when I say this. I don't think they're a good first pick. But, you know, it's a thousand ELO player who wants to play with what he's familiar with and comfortable with. And they do have Paladin. They also have really strong Cav Archers. And Magyar Hussar is a pretty strong unit that doesn't cost gold. So I could, I actually like Magyars more than I think I like some of the other civs picked out here. Celts, of course. Oh, man, their infantry, they go, Pogo! You know, their infantry is great. Uh, but on top of that, their siege is what you're normally thinking about. Capwatch actually lacks siege with the Berbers. But he does have cheap Cavalier. He's got those cheap Hussars. He's also got Camel Archers. So good mobile snipe potential for Capwatch, who still... Oh, wait, no. He's allied with MBL. Excuse me. I missed it. Okay. So if they're allied together, I'll look at Capwatch's point of view. You can see what your allies are doing. Wait. Oh, he has an allied MBL, and MBL has allied him back, is what happened. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Hmm. It's definitely like a disturbing lack of chat right now. You know? It, it definitely feels like, based on early conversation, though, we are going to see trade from Capoch down to this direction. But, like, did Edub even get a response? No, Eli did respond. Eli says, yeah, we're cool, Edub. Okay, so says they're cool. That's good. People are too focused on booming. Makes sense. Also, there's a lot of pressure right now. It's not really a time to chit-chat. There's lots of money on the line. And you can see how good the economies are. No surprise that the lower ELO players are behind. But just booming, booming, booming as the high-level players are known for. Tortilla, he says, uh, which casting software is this? Uh, this is Capture Age. Only we spent months and months and developed a certain a certain uh, proprietary T90 version of Capture Age that we might share with the community later. We're still working on it. Oh, great Stonewall from Red. Great Stonewall. Really got to make sure the opponent doesn't chop through that tree. <laughs> I assume he didn't know. That's funny. Is he just making sure? So wait, though, he's walling out, he's walling out purple. And they're allied right now. So if I'm purple, I would be like, oh, okay. Also, can we talk about Teal? He hasn't accepted alliances for a lot of people on the other side. Hmm. Yeah, there's also a video on YouTube about it, Tortilla, if you didn't see it. And look at this. Low elo nobody, the 1500 elo nobody. Says MBL probably biggest threat. Capoch says, yeah, we need to kill him. And Grace says, I go Wotes. So, I mean, I, I think this is, they're going to have a lot of success with this, to be honest with you. I, I, I think there just seems to be more coordinated effort over here. Meanwhile, E-Dub's like, hey, I just don't want to die. 
We'll see. What will MBL do? I don't know, but we've had zero communication between MBL and Sony Toprano. And MBL's stonewalling. MBL is not playing this like diplomacy. He's been scarred by Blue Coffee and others. And he also knows he's got a big target on his back, I think. So he just wants to survive this, which is a strat. But can you survive on your own here with no trade in the long run? I'm not too sure. So I would say MBL, if you, if you were putting money on people, you wouldn't want to put your money on him right now. He's stonewalling out blue. He's not allied to green, though he did try to. Just staying as safe as possible right now, I guess. Okay, now why Sicilians, Eli? Why Sicilians? These are the questions I ask myself. Obviously got great economy. And he could uh, take this corner. This right-hand corner has not been taken yet. Now, guys, we also have walls between red and teal. So this actually would block off perfect trade. Hmm. Matador, no trade, question mark. Upside down, question mark. Which I think is more common in Spanish, right? Actually, I think it was like Hidden Cup 2 and people guessed who Tato was because of his question marks. <laughs> El Matador says, trade how? Question mark. And Teal's like, well, we trade corner to corner. Uh, Matador, I think, is saying, well, how does this, how does that trade make sense for me? Teal's thinking about going this corner to this corner. So he's like, okay, I guess I can do that. He was thinking that trading with Teal wouldn't make sense. Like, it would make more sense for Red to trade to this corner because it's open. And Eli is going to move his king. Is Wonder and Relic activated? It is activated. It is possible. Maybe something MBL will think of. And uh, Teal is asking for a door, a.k.a. a gate for the trade. I'm sure they will get to that. Now, I feel like it's just important that Red and Teal have talked about that. And MBL, I think, realizes that Capwatch is not friends with him. I like how it says declared war on Capwatch when, like, it's not really a declaration of war when villagers are fighting, but maybe it is. We're looking to see if MBL is maybe imping yet. He is imping, so he's on his way. Wouldn't surprise me if Capwatch was as well, and Capwatch is too. So it is gonna go down between the two highest rated players in the game. I think this leaves some great opportunities for everyone else, guys. It's hard to know, like... Capwatch and MBL are going to have targets on their back, so it's really hard to know how to play it. But with the walls up and MBL adding barracks, I think he will do what I said. And I believe he will go for Hufnitzes, which are the crazy Bombard Cannons for the Bohemians with some halves. What do you guys think about the so-and-so years of friendship, by the way? Isn't that cool? I love that. I think that's really cool. Yo, we've got Dungeons. First time we've seen a dungeon, I think, today. All event, actually. So this is like a tower building for the Sicilians, and you can produce your unique unit from it. But you can also put your king inside of them. Not really that strong, but it's an option for you. If I'm Capoch, I think about camel archers here. I love how he considered a castle here and then thought twice about it. I would go camel archers, I believe. And now we see walls from Gray. And what's Gray going to do? Gray says MBL. Catpatch is coming for you. Oh, MBL's going to get a low elo friend. Let's go. And MBL says, I think he typed yes before he knew the Catpatch was coming for you part. I feel like MBL's played this like a player who has been hurt too many times to trust anyone. And like, it's just a matter of how open he can be to a friend. I can hit him from behind if we ally. Wow, yeah, I like it. The dip lowers dip lowing. MBL says, yes, let's do it. So it's not a massive declaration of love, but it is something. Now, I think MBL doesn't know how to do the chat settings. He said, yes, let's do it. And Sony Toprano saw that. I'm 99% certain. And MBL says, like, this is MBL's opportunity to say, hey, Blue, I have Gray with me. We're going to kill, and we're going to do amazing things together. But instead, MBL says, Blue, I'm in peace with you, but I have my defenses ready. <laughs> what? 
What is that? Work together. Work together. Trust each other, man. Okay. Blue is the same going for orange. Ah, don't kill orange. What did E-Dub do? He's not even on the outside. E-Dub's a thousand elo. Don't... Hey, if, if the previous game is anything to go by... The 1,000 ELOers that make it into these games have a rough time. There's a reason I tried to do full high ELO. E-Dub didn't talk to Blue in all fairness. But there is such a thing as karma, my friends. So, uh, th that happened to Dogao and Miguel, remember, in the other game. Alright. Looking at the trade. I mean, it definitely... Is cramped out here, man. This is... It's hard to move around. Remember, Gray said that he wants to help against Kapoch. And he's kind of making walls, so if he were to lock the gates later, he would kind of sandwich Kapoch in. I don't think Kapoch is expecting that from a 1500 ELO player. If I had to guess, I would say MBL's researching Hufnitze. He is, so from Bomber Cannon to Hufnitze. And now he's gonna, uh, you know, camp it out and prepare... Now, notably, no trade, as we have Sony Toprano now turning on Orange. And we'll see what Orange does about this. We'll see if E-Dub chats. I feel bad for E-Dub here. I really do feel bad for him. And he declares war on Sony Toprano. He is imping in this TC as well, which means he won't make it to imp because he's chosen the wrong TC. Oof. Okay. I'm coming with Halb Siege, says Gray, and Kapoch says MBL has Halb Hauf, which is Hufnitze. The question is, was Gray being honest to MBL, or was he being honest to Kapoch? I think he was being honest to MBL, but then he could face the wrath of the Mongols if he kills Kapoch. Hey, Sony. Mongols have been quite strong late game. I need a reliable ally in the wars to come. What's your team look like? Okay, so Blue responded with a yes. And we have... Okay, we have... Teal saying player 7, which is great, coming with Kapoch. Red says, who is the victim? So it feels like Teal and Red are talking right now. They're like, well, who are we going to go against? And here comes MBL. This is the big 1v1 that maybe many of you wanted. I think MBL wins this, and MBL says 14. He wants Gray to go now. I don't know if Gray is necessarily ready for this. He is 1,500 ELO after all, and Gray does it, and Kapoch is not going to be a happy camper. Oh, boy. Kapoch is going to immediately get Teal involved. I think he should anyways. Now, will Teal actually defend him? Because it might be better for, for him if Kapoch dies. Levi says MBL. Okay, so that means if Kapwatch notices this, which I don't think he has yet, he can say, Gray is against me, and that means that Teal would be able to help. MBL first, and MBL says, what, Levi? Levi didn't change the chat settings! He didn't change who that was going to, so now MBL knows it's coming. Meanwhile, Blue seemingly has not given up against our E-Dub. E-Dub's still fighting on. But now MBL will know, and Kapoch says, Traitor! Traitor! He's saying that to Gray, who's got 400 HP Kelt Rams. I mean, that's going to be tough. But I do think now Teal will defend Kapoch. Kapoch can definitely do this if Teal and Red defend. That's a big if, because they haven't done that yet. They're kind of being crappy allies right now, honestly. <laughs> like, MBL says, Teal, you with me, and we have a pause. This is a live game, by the way. We are a little bit behind. What in the world? Okay. Well, I would like to see E-Dub, now they continue. I would like to see E-Dub try and defend himself, but I don't think that's going to happen. Now here we are. Player 7, you kill Kapoch, says Teal. And now MBL is going to turn on Teal because he doesn't trust him. And you have Teal now turning on Gray as we expected. Okay. So, this is what I thought was going to happen. It took a while. Oh, wait! Now Red is attacking Kapoch. I think he wants to fight with Teal, but he's confused on the orders. What in the world is this? Teal's going to be like, yo, Red, are you with me or what? Because why are you attacking this guy? Wow, this got really confusing. 
Okay. And now gray has declared war on red, but red hasn't actually declared war on gray. These guys have no clue what's happening. It's so stressful. This is hilarious. And now red allies gray, even though gray's killing him. And red says misunderstanding. Okay, I like that. I like how he's trying to recover. He's like, I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. And it seems like he's just going to let teal clear gray. And I think gray really needed... Like, he needs MBL to kill Catwatch, basically. Because if MBL kills Catwatch, then MBL can save Grey, possibly. Meanwhile, E-Dub is just like... As I like to say, he's treading water, but he's still gonna drown. He doesn't really have a chance right now. He never really had control of the Outer Ring. But I think E-Dub might be our first person down. Of course, a lot of players, big motivator here, the cash prize pool. 25 bucks, like, from a high ELO perspective, 25 bucks to kill a 1,000 ELO player... Might seem like easy cash, you know? So, he, he's going for it. And I think he wants space, too. Eli says, trade Mr. Soprano. I have markets in the corner. And yes, you know, if, if Orange isn't going to be a part of that, you want him gone. Gray's king, though, on the move. And I think Gray could go down a lot faster than he expected. He's on the move. He's trying to leave from this army. And here he is. And he is dangerously close to going down. As is Catwatch, though. Catpatch's castle is under attack from Gray's castle, actually. But Celts get severely countered by Magadai and by the Siege Rams. And I think this could be the end for Gray. But it also could be the end for Catpatch. Catpatch is really under pressure right now. And he needs the support from Teal. We could see three players go down. Edub was actually killed by Eli. Eli took the kill. And Gray is like Teal Truce. Uh, I don't think that's going to work out for you, buddy. You, you backstabbed one Argentinian. The other Argentinian's going to be here to help. Catpatch is king. Still alive, but barely. And Edub says, had a fun time, but out of depth. Yeah, I, I understand the stress there. And Gray is still on the move. <laughs> Great. No, Gray's dead. Gray's dead. Low elo nobody. I appreciate him because he shook it up here. But the two lowest ELO players are immediately killed off in this game. Ruthless, but glad I could give them the opportunity. Catpatch could be next, though. Catpatch could be next. He's really under pressure. And Levi says, let's go Matador. So I think he says, let's go to save Catpatch. They want to keep Catpatch in this game. Eli says, Sony, shall we get MBL to hit Mongol player with us? Obviously, MBL's a little distracted right now. But El Matador and, and Levi really seem to be a team that trusts each other. MBL says, Blue, I'll stand with you to the end, okay? Blue's going to want Eli in on that deal. Very hard to talk and to, and to play the game at the same time as now MBL is 1v3. And MBL realizes he needs to turn on red. He does turn on red. And Eli says, MBL, I am yours to command. My friends, this is an amazing game because we're going to have a 3v3 now. We are going to have a 3v3. This is precisely how the amazing game on Donut earlier played out. Where two players got killed off. It turned into some epicness later on. The players have figured out the Diplo. Though they don't play these settings. And MBL says, okay, player six, go player five. So he's saying, go kill Teal right now. And if anything, you should go kill Red, to be honest, but... MBL might be more worried about the Mongols. Wait, wait, wait. Catpatch just declared war on Red. And Red did... I'm so confused. Is this another one of your misunderstandings here? Eli says, let's hit player five. MBL commands it. Meanwhile, Gray's buildings are getting cleared up. That's what you're seeing here. They have trade established over here yet? The kind of trading, not a lot. Hmm. Well, MBL keeping a close eye on his Hufnitsa here. And oh my god, Capoch, Good micro. Capoch really needs to get Vils elsewhere if he can. If his allies will allow it, he needs to get out of here. And he needs constant support from his allies too. Unfortunately, right now, Teal is running into a lot of Gray's stuff, so he's not supporting. A big shot from MBL's Hufnitsa. These things are nuts. I told you, that's a sane unit. And with Halb as a buffer, you'd have to use range units to get in to kill them. And I really don't see that being possible. Here's a look at the military stats, guys. 
As MBL continues his push. It is interesting to see that Eli seems to just want MBL to feel like the, the king right now, you know? Oh, MBL commands it. I will do this. It's like he's boosting up MBL's ego so he can smash it down later. Is kind of my vibe. Look at this. Oh, yeah, he's going to make a move. Oh, yeah, he's making a move. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Sony Tepranos here as well. Oh, jeez. Trebs please is blue. Oh, this is about to be so bad for Capwatch because Capwatch won't have support. Like, the support's just massing now. But they're one step behind. Teal's going to see this and realize, like, this is a problem. Look, Red sees it and says, this is a problem. And maybe... This could be the end of either Teal or Red. I think at the end of the day, it's certainly going to be the end for Capwatch, whose king is hiding in the corner, because he can't receive as much help if the others want to save themselves. So this is the correct move from Capwatch. Run with Vils and your king. Oh my god, he actually can't get through Gray's Gate. Guys, he can't run this way because of Gray's Gate that's still here. Oh my god, the villagers get flattened. Can you Siege Tower Kings? Oh, Capwatch can't run. He can't run away. He's trapped. Meanwhile, the big fight begins. We have Korean Halbs. We have Korean Siege Onagers. And the King gets attack grounded by MVL. What a, what a finish. Remind me to go back to that one later. Capwatch out in third. And he's probably going to be like, man, that low elo nobody ruined this for me. Obviously, Gray paid the price. Like, Gray must be a big MBL fan or something. He paid the price. MBL gets 25 bucks. Levi has 25 bucks. And then Eli has the 25 bucks. And now, we kind of have a 3 versus 2. We haven't seen MBL against the Mongols and Tatars yet. It has mainly been Eli and has mainly been Sony Toprano. But these are some crazy fights. Oh, big shot there, though, from Teal. Recovery. They need to take this out. Gray's on it, though. He's got a Militia still going to town. Okay, so... I feel like MBL, he did say he's going to be with Blue to the end. He says, I'm coming to Teal and Red. Okay, so he's going to join. He says, we secure top three and big monies. All right, so the money, clearly a motivator for MB. It is big money. 250 for first. Not bad. Oh, big shot! Mongol SO! Boom! One for four, baby! And now Red realizes he's got to be against purple here. And he's got to be against blue. A little late. MBL wants that big money. Keep in mind, trade was going... What? Why is trade going this way? I don't understand that, actually. That's confusing. It feels like you just can't kill this death ball. Now, Sicilian Cavalier have a lot of extra melee armor. They're very strong. MBL is just making his way down here ever so slowly. The way I think this game is going to go is as follows. I think that they will secure the top three. I think that they're far too strong. And I think Eli and Sony are going to turn against MBL. I don't know when, but I believe that will be the next move for them once they clear out teal if they clear out teal if you look at the stockpiles i mean he doesn't seem to have a lot of gold so it feels like as his mangadai and siege go down he won't be able to replenish it and straight halb would just kill his hussars you look at mbl's king it's fairly obvious you look at blue's king oh he knows you know he heard what mbl said but he can't trust that he's making towers what about Eli? Oh, look at the fortifications. These guys, they're ready. And Teal says no gold. Red says same. And if there's no gold, this will be a very quick game for you guys. What you could do is you could just give each other the king kills. You could, you could let your ally kill you. And then they could pocket the cash. But obviously with these armies, they're going to want to continue to fight. Smile in my chat right now if you didn't know who Sony Toprano was before today. This guy plays a lot of 1v1s on the ladder. I've lost uh, quite a few games to him. He's a good player. Very creative player, too. Just part of that top 100, you know, and he signed up for this event. I'm very surprised and satisfied with how well he's done with Diplo here. Also, he somehow split... <laughs> 
He somehow avoided every single hit there. Wow, that's creative. It's a good player, one of many good Turkish active players on the ladder. MBL has 15k gold right now. He's got so many resources, and he's going to drop Bombard Towers here. MBL should be able to push the castle. The king is in this castle, which is right below it for Teal. Teal will be done soon, and red will follow. And there's no real way to stop this. It feels like Eli's prepping something, though. Not really. I, like It feels like he's f doesn't have as much pop in the fight right now, which is why I say that. MBL will lose a few Hufnitze here. But he could always make more with those resources. He's landing some big shots on the Mangadai. But he's got a position that can't be can't be pushed back. Man, is it insane to see this. I mean, Halb's just coming in all the time. MBL's Hufnitze's here. Like, these three Hufnitze's have 70 kills. Three of them. I wish I would have selected the whole group. These Siege Onagers have seven kills. <laughs> like, wow. And Teal's trying. I mean, we've got keeps here for blue, too. He's really trying his best right now. I think red is going to try and hit Eli, but Eli is making dungeons and Siege Onagers to defend from that. And this has not been a very easy game for the team that I thought was more well-established. I, I think Gray kind of screwed him up. Gray definitely was, was the player who confused them and they thought we were going to fight alongside them. I think for Gray, <laughs> hindsight's 2020, but maybe you send some villagers in your king to MBL before you do that, though. <laughs> like, it just seems so ballsy to make that decision and then just stay there with everything. Like, what do you think was going to happen? The king's here for Teal. He doesn't want to give it up yet. This would be the time, guys. Like, if if Sony wanted to prep for MBL, this would be the time. Backstab him. Because they know that Teal is pretty much out of the game. Teal has just researched treason to find out where other kings are. MBL has researched treason to find out where the kings are. So that'll give him a little ping. That will tell him it's around here. It is looking very good for MBL right now. He's got probably an incredible KD. I'll show you here. The overall KD. 262 units killed. 104 units lost. With the most value destroyed as well. Okay, Sony Toprano has, has turned on red, which I thought he did before. So this is all stuff that we expected. No big surprises here. Though that's a lot of Mangadai. I think Teal's making a run for it. I think he researched treason to find out where someone's king is, and he's making a run for it, hoping he can get it. Because he he knows he's going to die. So there he goes. Don't ask me why he's gone box formation. <laughs> what? Box it up, boys. Let's go. His king is on the move. Again, I might tell Red to kill me here. It, it sucked to die with this many manga die, but I might say, hey, just take the kill. Red can't seem to get through. Red's also got a big ball. I mean, they want to get revenge here before they die. And Blue with this massive push. Making more markets still. Like, Okay, what would you do in Blue's position? Let's say Red and Teal die right now. Would you talk to MBL about killing Eli and take second? Or potentially first still, I guess. Or would you talk to Eli about taking out MBL? I feel like the natural course of events is that Sony Toprano and Eli will talk about taking out the king, who is MBL. That castle goes down. MBL's still hunting for the king. Teal's still on the move with Mangadai, which could be a real pain. He actually could kill MBL. He, he honestly, if he keeps his king alive, could kill MBL. Can you believe this? I can't believe this is happening. Is MBL going to notice this? Please don't tell me that Teal's going to lose the king right now. Teal, do not do not lose this king. Run. Thank you for trying this, by the way. Here he goes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's still on the move with his king over here. MBL is probably focused. You really have to babysit this army. Ooh! Oh, my God. Okay. He can maybe make this king eject, guys. This is maybe possible. This would be the ep most epic snipe of the event so far. MBL's keep is on the way down. Now, what you want to do is you leave your units on attack stance. You do not... 
No, 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 no. Okay, MBL notices. You do not click the tower. You let them on attack stance because then MBL will have a chance to run. Will MBL lose? He's sending villagers to repair. He's trying to keep this alive. This is unbelievable. Teal's King could die at the same moment, by the way. Teal's King is over here somewhere. I don't know where it is. It's in a red building. The tower is going down, but the Mangadai are also dying to the castle. And MBL's trying to make Hufnitze, but he's pop-capped. He's desperate. He could lose it. He could lose the game right here. He can't get the repairs in right now. The villagers are blocked. But how many Mangadai are going to remain? This is so close. This is so close. He's making anything he can. I think he's going to stay alive. I think MBL will stay alive here. He's got the repairs coming in. There's less Mangadai than there were before. And Red turns on MBL, which is, again, weird, because I thought he always was against MBL. But wait a second. No, it continues. It continues. The repair villagers are gone. <laughs> And MBL's getting cleared up because he's probably focused on this. No, who needs it? Okay, what you don't want to do is you don't want to kill your own tower. Oh my god. And Teal says 24, which is the dad gum taunt. What a moment, dude. Hey, my salutes go out to you, Teal, because that was so close. And now I think he realizes he's done. Yep, he says kill my king, Matador, which is the respectable move. Wow. Okay, real quick, because the stutters have returned. I apologize for that. That's the one thing with this we've got to improve. I'm just going to quickly restart it. it. It helps a lot. The stutters go away. Only thing we miss out on is a little bit of data, but trust me, it's better. But, oh, man. That was so crazy. Okay, we'll be back in the game here. We're playing the same game. Everything's good. And here we are, casting away. The teal. There's his king. You see Red has got the kill, so Red gets the 25. And wow. Oh, sorry, we're speeding up now, my bad. So that right there is the ultimate wake-up call for MBL. The ultimate wake-up call to wall this up and to fortify your king a little bit more. We do still have Red remaining. And Red's king is here. But it is unlikely that Red will be able to survive this. So respect to Pella or Levi. Respect to Teal. Because he really gave it a shot there. I think a lot of players would have just resigned without trying. That was crazy, man. And it was it was so good from MBL to try and repair it. Like he did everything he could there. Cued up Hufnitze, created the wagon. He lost like 30 villagers there, but it was so important that he did. Uh, man, you look at Tatars and you're just like, man, where's the siege, you know? <laughs> Not really a sieve that can compete with this much siege, but. I don't. I think this is the biggest ball of siege onagers we've seen used consistently the whole event thus far. We've seen a lot of siege too, but oh, the hussars make it in. Great fight from El Matador. He's not finished yet, but MBL is going to come in. And when MBL is back, I think that's where the problem set in. Ay ay ay. That was that was great from Teal. Great from MBL. I'm happy that we got to witness that one. And. MBL researched treason so he could find the king. He's got his army. He knows that the king is over here somewhere. Okay, so this is where we start to think, like, what's Eli up to right now? What is Eli up to? He's got militia in there. Militia in here. Lightcap in here. So he's faking big time. And if there was ever a time to maybe mass something against MBL or against Blue, this would be the time. He's not doing that, though. He's not doing that. I think it'd be wiser for Eli to try and convince Blue to go against MBL with him than anything. But if you look at the stockpile, MBL has 16k gold. So this could be just, you know, we, we call MBL the cockroach of AoE, the guy who never dies in 1v1s anyways. Can you imagine that crazy 2 versus one battle against MBL? It might last forever. This has been a pretty quick game compared to some of the other ones, but... My goodness, we've still got half the game remaining, at least with the players remaining. Of course, Red about to die. So Red's really trying. At this point, he's probably running out of food to be able to make Hussars, too. I can't imagine his eco's looking too good. And his king is there. Now, I forget already, MBO only had one king snipe, right? Unfortunately, when we refresh this, it doesn't show. I'd have to, to look back. 
But MBL's done a lot of work, and he hasn't really killed the Kings yet. Look at Eli! Eli! Eli takes the kill! <laughs> Eli takes the kill! He did that before, too, against Edub. And Red calls the GG. Red, of course, is dead. I think he, again, reserves our respect. He put up a really big fight. It just... His side completely was, was getting smashed, but wasn't necessarily on him. And that's not the first time Eli has said, I will give me those $25. And, and Eli, 1900 ELO, says, Gentlemen, the question is simple. Dogs or cats? <laughs> dogs or cats? MVL says, I love dogs. Okay, this is a weird process. Let's see what Blue says. Not what I expected to hear from Eli. And Eli says, Sony, your answer. But what happens if he also likes dogs? Let's kill MBL. I think that's the same as liking dogs. He is the better player. He doesn't want to play the game. Then fate decides, he says. Also, you're trading with Eli, so why would you turn on him? It should be against MBL here. Okay, deal. I think MBL needs to sense this is coming. These production buildings are now useless. You need to have production buildings at home. And oh boy, he knows. Eli declares war on MBL. MBL declares war on Sony and also on Eli. What's so annoying though is you've got this amazing high value army that's got so much, so much damage in. And it's so slow. Like th this is where the problem comes in. He could kind of push with this, I guess. Watch this attack round. Ready? He's going to shoot in front. Oh, he missed it. But yeah, Eli seems pretty well defended right now. And here comes all that siege. All that Korean siege. All those halbs. And BL's king still sits back here in that keep. This is where MBL will try his best against two players. And Eli says his army is at reds. Which is true, but that's not everything he's got, right? I'll go to the military stats now and show you. It's going to only show the top three, so this is nice. MBL's got, uh, like, 40 army here. He's going to have enough Hufnitze at home to be able to hold. So Eli it says it's going to be a minute till he can defend, but that's not necessarily true. And MBL sees this right now. So he's defending right now, and MBL's like, oh my god, I'm going to kill his king. Which is not true, because there's a militia in there. But... You gotta stop this if you're Eli. And Blue is gonna run away. It is MBL versus the world. And if I were to... If this would be scripted, guys, this would be exactly how I would have drawn this one up, honestly. Maybe not the earlier stages, but MBL against the others sounds like some good content to me. Of course, MBL did have teammates in this game. He did figure out the Diplo. I don't think he had high levels of trust early. It'll be happy to make it to the final three. And as you can see, Sicilian Cavalier, not too bad here. It's funny, though, because it's like 50% less bonus damage for Yellow's Halbs. But Yellow's Halbs get 25% more bonus damage because of Bohemians. So I don't know how that works. Sicilians, man. Bohemians, man. But MBL is just going to have a unit number problem. Like, Siege Onager Cavalier seems stronger than Halb Hufnitze. Think of the HP. And I don't think MBL is going to be able to hold on as long as maybe some of you would want. Look, he's sending Halbs home right now through the keeps. He has been able to snipe the Trebs. But we're just going to see a lot of Bombard Cannon Micro from MBL. And I just don't see him being able to push anywhere. Now, if he gets past here, though, he then takes out the market. So that affects their trade. Hmm. Okay. Mods, by the way, if we could take care of that one comment that was like maybe like 10 seconds ago now, that would be great. I know you're engrossed in the game right now. You might not, you might just be zoning out. If there's any mods there, that'd be great. You want to see the resources? I got the resources. There's the resources for you. It shows the, the amount of workers they have on each thing. So for MBL, he's not even on the top three of workers. So I imagine he's tied for zero then with green. So he's got zero on gold, but he does have 12k gold in the bank. Oh my god! How did he how did he get that shot off right there? That was gorgeous. And another one. 
He's still got plenty of hoof needs it here, but again, there's SO coming. This is a big death ball that he cannot deal with. Not easily, anyways. Yeah, so this shows the top three of whatever category, right? And so, seeing as third place is green, who's dead at zero, MBL must also be at zero with with uh, gold units. Thank you, mods. Ufnitze, though, on Siege Onagers, and MBL says, Get out of here! Get off my lawn! Get out! God, military, though. MBL's at 87. 94. He's looking real good. Blue just lost a lot of Siege. Now, Bohemians don't really have other good units. Like, they could go hand cannons, or they could mix in those wagons. And MBL says, Player 6, you're dealing with a big force here. Secure your second spot by teaming me. Oh, -ho! how the turntables. I like it. Good attempt from MBL. It might not work, but I honestly feel like that would be a really smart move for purple. To at least kill blue. But not now. Like, maybe not now. You wait until you fight against MBL a while longer, and then you kill Blue. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. MBL says no reply. Blue, let's take him down. And now MBL's got offers from both. Sony says kill MB and send my king to you, player six. So so Blue is saying that he will give his he will give Eli the kill if they kill MBL. But now Eli has already accepted MBL's deal. Yo, whoa, this this came out of nowhere. And according to Eli, the reason he did this was because dogs was the right answer. Who knows if we can believe him. But if you're blue right now, you're like, well, this sucks. I'm completely sandwiched. All his trade's going to go down now. His king has to run somewhere, but it's not going to be safe. And now this is, I mean, Sony is going to go down so much faster than MBL ever would have. Okay. MBL says I'll take down his towers. I feel like Blue's deal, though, of of giving his king up later would have been really, really smart for Eli to take. And Eli gets his third king kill that I remember. And MBL says, good boy. All right, Eli, it's you and me. And now he immediately turns on Eli. Apparently, uh, preferring dogs over cats really pays off in diplomacy games. I wouldn't have ever known that. And Eli says, okay, haha, ha, well, that's it. What's it? Let's look at the stockpile of resources here. Eli has gold income. He has food income. He's got good resources. Any last words, says Eli. What? What? I bet you any money MBL did what I did and looked back at his king in panic there. MBL says, may the best win. What a big... Like, what a result it would be if Eli could win this 1v1 right now. He has mobility, and he also could still, in theory, trade, which is not possible at all for uh, MBL. Well, it is possible, but he's not doing that. So we have a 1900 ETHO player who, surprise, surprise, has played in community games over the years up against MBL. There is a $100 difference in the finishing spot, so whoever gets first gets 250. Whoever gets second gets 150. And MBL has researched treason to find out where the king is and probably saw that it's somewhere in this mad, uh, this madness, this mess. But you'll notice Eli is actually trading, and he's trading with Red, who MBL's not allied with, so MBL can't see that. So, guys, this is the spot we're in. I know MBL has a lot of gold, and I think he's got probably relics somewhere. Yeah, he's got four relics. But MBL needs to kill Eli, because having four relics is not going to be like having established trade. So, we have this massive, gargantuan death ball here. And we have to see if Eli can get some lucky siege onager shots to flatten this, because it's going to be a problem. Can you delete your king and not give anyone the kill? You can. We have seen that. It is not proven to be a very popular move amongst the fans. But it is possible, and I understand it in some situations. But I prefer to see players do what El Matador did, or what Teal did, and he gave his kill to Red. He's like, hey, take the money, dude. Take the money. But then he didn't even get it. <laughs> then Eli took it.
I love how Eli took it. Yeah. You you could delete it. I think like we've only had one instance. I'll probably review it at the end and we'll see. We'll see what happens. Massive credit to Teal this game. Seriously, MBL could have been dead, dude. MBL could have been dead. What a moment. You know, it's it's a little sad that we didn't see the game end there for MBL. That would have been a the moment of the, the whole event so far, but still. Guys, MBL's got 144 military. And he's got like He's got 19 forward. Oh, he missed. Wow, he sucks. He's got 19 forward hoof needs, eh? And he's got like defensive ones too. He's got like 30 hoof needs eh, right now. So Eli is going to have to put a stop to this. I just don't know how. It looks like this is a, a big ball that he's going to use to try and snipe MBL. But the pain train is coming here. The pain train is coming. Okay. Well, here you go. This is, I mean, in theory, a slightly better fight for Sicilians because they, they resist bonus damage, but it still seems like a really bad fight. <laughs> I think if you were to make any unit right now, it would be elite sergeants, right? I think sergeants would be really good against Halbs. Not sure about continuing with only Cavalier, but I do like this. He's got sergeants in there, actually. Yo, that's a lot of pop right there. He's got 20 units inside of those rams. Plus the 11 rams. MBL wasn't the most observant character earlier. This is a very slow but strong push. But he's got to babysit this. See this? He's got to keep an eye on it all the time. He's just so good at it. Also has a lot of defensive castles. Here it comes. So, MBL's got a few units which will catch this, but Sergeants should wreck Halbs, and then the Siege Rams can do some work there. MBL slowly moving around. I like what Purple's doing. He's keeping MBL's focus here, trying to micro. It doesn't look too pretty, but it is something, and he is benefiting from it in some ways. All the while, here you go. Eli, T90 Community Gamer. Been around the town. Been, been in some videos. He knows MBL's reputation. He knew that this would not be easy for him, but he made it here. Hey, okay, MBL reacts. Now, this is where, in theory, you should pop out with the sergeants, I think. And Treason's now been researched, so he's going to go for that king. I think you've got to pop out with the sergeants. There he goes. Sergeants won't do too well against Castle Fire, but they will do pretty good against Halbs. And now MBL will not have that gold from the Monastery. And now MBL... Oh, he's a little distracted here. Just a little, though. Somehow he hasn't lost anything yet. So the Ram Sergeant push, I think, was successful. Though I do think if you're going to kill MBL, you've got to take those castles. You, you can't play the snipe game at this stage. You've got to take castles, which is important for late game prote protection. Also, would really like to see sergeants maybe produced out of the dungeons here. He's got enough of them to maybe do that. What are? Let's look at resources again. MBL with 9k gold. Eli with only... Whoa! But he's got 70 farmers. So I don't think... I don't know. I think he's just spending a lot of res. He probably has a lot of units in queue, which I unfortunately can't see. Um, that's something we want to we wanna change. I think he's got a lot of his units in queue right now, would be my guess. Yeah, I mean, he's got more gold workers than MBL. So in theory, once MBL's out of the 9k gold, as he's about to get his relics again, it could then be advantage Eli. Now, hold on. Let's think about this. Does they have a lot of stone? See, guys, you can win with a wonder. And if you could, if they could buy the stone, which MBL could, he could just play defense up until the victory. He doesn't have to kill the king. That would mean he doesn't get an additional 25, of course, for killing the final king. Oh! Oh my god, what a shot! What a shot! MBL prevents himself from getting hit by another one, but, but yeah, so I mean, there's a lot of things to think about. Wonder victory is... Maybe realistic for MBL. He's losing farms over here. Uh, he's losing those vills, and he's losing this too. So great awareness from Eli. But good siege on a shot from Eli, which is something that he needed. He needed a change from just the light calf. 
Someone had just said, MBL's not wasting gold, his bomber cannons won't die. I mean, he's making monks, and he's making bomber cannons right now. So it is very costly when it comes to gold, but he... Uh, I mean, he isn't losing a lot. Like, his KD is incredible here. Actually, it's not that incredible, but I think he's got good value from the fights. Suddenly not 20 bomber cannons anymore. I love Eli's distractions. Hitting MBL distracts him, so he can't focus on this as much. And a lot of those halves go down for MBL. But he still does defend this quite reasonably. This is maybe an area where MBL wasn't looking. So I'm not sure if it distracted him that much. But he's got buildings around if he wants to do something with it. Can we talk about how fitting it is that the fight is happening on, like, in the middle? It's not exactly on the crosshair, but it's like to finish off the Regicide Rumble game on cro on the crosshair is just perfect. I'm liking that. MBL needs more food eco and more wood eco for Halbs right now, guys. 28 on food, 14 on wood is not great. He really is going to need to have more of that in the long term, and I think he's realizing that. See, he's adding farms. He'll probably add more vills too. Yep, he's adding more vills. He's probably sending them to wood over here. Yep. May the best player win. Right now, I think it's pretty close. I honestly think it's close. Ahufnite is going to go down. Eli is starting to push MBL back. He's also got 115 eco compared to MBL 64. So he's getting good value fights. And he's got the greater economy right now. Here comes a wave from Eli. Now again, if I'm Eli, every time I go into MBL's base, obviously rating is good. But the long-term stuff you want to think of, pretend this is a 1v1 now. You want to take out the castles, right? So this obviously won't do that, but that's what I think you need to think of. Also, would love to see some Siege Ram here. MBL really struggling to keep up with things now as he's fixing his eco. And he's adding markets to possibly trade with... Capwatch! He can trade with Capwatch. Wait, is Eli allied with Capwatch? I don't think he was, right? Or is he? Because he has vision there. Wait, does it say Capwatch? Aha! Okay, so Eli can delete those, but he has Capwatch on enemy right now. When Capwatch died, he was allied to Eli. So Eli could ally Capwatch, and it, you can delete your allies' buildings. As for Gray, it would, I think, be the same scenario. So MBL is going to trade for now, which is important. And BL said, top three big monies. Let's see if he can get the biggest money. 250. So here come the Rams and the Cavalier. So you can delete allies, buildings, or units. Eli is trading with Red, who's defeated. But Red was not allied to MBL when he died. So if I am correct on this, it should be fairly easy for Eli to realize the trade is happening if he looks. And then when he realizes it is happening, he can simply delete those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can only delete them when they're when they're dead. Yeah, obviously. When they're alive, you can't. <laughs> That's an important distinction. <laughs> when they're alive, you can't delete their stuff. But this isn't like a special game mode thing. That's just how the game works in general. MBL, really? I mean, he's having some problems. He's fixing his eco, though. He's up to 100 eco. That's what he's been working on. He's got five relics versus three. You see some units coming over here for Eli. I think Eli saw the farmers, right? He looked, he saw the farmers. That's where he's headed. Also, MBL's got plenty of gold here. Guys, buckle up. This game isn't going to end anytime soon. This game is going to go on forever. This game is going to continue all night. Both players deserve the win, I'd say. Both players have played so well, and it's a matter on who can do it. Late game Age of Empires, crazy, crazy stuff here. Since when? Oh, it's been like that for years, my friend. I've talked about that for a very long time, but you might probably... It's not something that you always think of, you know? It has always been that way. Now, Eli's got 41 on gold. He might not be banking as much gold, but he's got 41 on gold. MBL has 15 on gold with 4K gold. Remember, he had 9K as he now loses his building, uh, these buildings. Still has these buildings, but then we'll still have Blue's Towers to deal with. So he'll have to take care of that before he can push out comfortably. 
And again, I'm just wondering, we, we should eventually see Eli's stances change if he notices the trade. It's really good for Eli that when Blue died, Blue was against MBL. It's really good. Yo, Santo, thank you for the stars, buddy. You've been here all day. Hope you've been enjoying it. Thank you, man. This is awesome, man. This is awesome. MBL is obviously not giving up. It's just that he had such a high military count. Now he's got to think ahead with the economy. And so he's there now. You can see the trade difference, the eco, the total eco difference. I think the trade count is included in the eco number, by the way. So it's probably like 70-ish villagers for Eli, plus the trade. And that's what brings you that number. It's about time MBL switches into something else, and we're starting to see archer ranges now. So MBL is going to mix in hand cannons, which I think is something he, he particularly needs now that he's up against champions. My phone is telling me, or my, my watch is telling me I just got a smartwatch. It's time to stand. No! It is time to sit, and we will continue to sit. Atta att attacking is scary, as I sit would say. God, I mean, like, what if... Let's talk crazy scenarios. What if this villager decides to chop this tree... I'm telling you, she's going to go to that tree because it's closest. You're kidding. Okay, so if there's not already a hole, there will be a hole there. MBL's king is still back there. <laughs> but the champion play, eh, it was good against straight help. Now it's going to look pretty bad. Now you probably want to switch into Cavalier again. And mainly Cavalier if you are Eli. But, you know, again, this has become a standard late game duel. MBL known as the Cockroach of AoE. Probably not the most attractive nickname ever. But in 1v1 games in particular, he has a habit of staying alive for a very long time. Here he finds himself against a 1900 he's probably never heard of before. Unless he's kept an eye on my community games. Now that's no disrespect to Eli. Eli's like top 400, top 300 maybe. I don't know what 1900 puts you at right now. Eli is clearly a very good player. But Eli again is... I've kind of, I've watched him grow. I've watched him improve. And we're going to have many of those guys. Many of the players who signed up. We've got one or two players in each little community game that has played pretty frequently in my free-for-alls over the years. And if you look at the rankings, there, there, there's a lot of these players that are sub-2K that are going deep into these games. Um, I guess I could do a little spoilers, right? We had uh, we had C-Bomb. Going late into a game today. We had Teutonic Tanks. 17, 1800. Probably could be more. Played a lot of my community games. It's a different world out here. The diplomacy stuff. You have to understand when to move. Who to move against and why. But MBL is building up towards that death ball again, guys. This is crazy. Oh, boy. He's got 100 military now. And he's going to start this slow push across the map. Yeah, Eli, uh, maybe you're seeing lack of unit control. He probably set his, he probably had his gather point set here for a while. And it wouldn't surprise me if he recently changed it. But so many units have been on the way that if, even if he fixed it, they've already been given their destination. But I like the fact that he, he was hitting the sides of MBL. I think that's how he wins this. He needs siege workshops here, I'd say. But if he's going to win, he needs to, like, hit here with some rams and some cavalier. He's got to hit this, clear this. Like, it's going to be, like, so difficult, but that's how he has to do it. <laughs> R-Base is going to place top three tomorrow. You heard it here. Who's with R-Base again? So we have R-Base and we have Ray as the two standouts in their games as far as, you know, if you're a community gamer, you're aware of them. Um, another one... Which is in the final game with Doubt and Tato. Boom! Big shot is uh, Deontay for life. Ethan, Ethan in chat. He's always around on Fridays. There's 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 a few in there. Um, you have Vinchester, Velez, and Bact. Easy. Just just kill Velez in Dark Age with the Drush. Easy. <laughs> I won MBL to win, but rooting for Eli says says Jaquez. Isn't that like? Doesn't that statement make zero sense? 
You basically would be okay with either player winning, I guess, in that case. Oh, this is important. This is important. Like, MBL spotting this is huge. Remember I talked about the side attacks. MBL slowly taking out the buildings. Slowly, but there's so many. Holy cow. Big SO shot incoming. MBL sees it. MBL backs away. Nice avoidance. Yeah, oxymoron. That's true. That's what that's called. Let's look at resources again. Stockpiles. Boom. Eli, 44 on gold. 23 on gold for MBL. Eli has not noticed this. And it is possible to do what I said. Does Eli notice this? Probably not. Because he's a little busy right now. He's a little preoccupied with, I don't know, fighting one of the best post in players Age of Empires has. Now, I think, you know, I've talked about, oof, oof, that hurts. Um, I've talked about the importance of Eli hitting from different positions. It's harder for MBL with his unit comp, but maybe forward buildings would be good. Like, every time you take a position, oh my god, big shot! You want to have forward buildings. Those units were on a tight patrol there, and they, they did not really appreciate that one. The Halbs are getting melted by the Sicilian Cavalier, though. Like, any other Civs Cavalier, this would be bad. Eli says, okay, you've made your point. Hmm. Is he going to give up here? His eco's okay. His military's down to 13. And MBL says, let me get your king. Eli says, you can have him. But he's not moving his king. I believe that is the king, or is that a monk? Oh, same difference. He says, you can have him, but I need your king also. MBL is not going to be excited to hear that. MBL asked him if he surrendered, and Eli's basically like, you've got to bring your king to the deal. I think MBL is going to say no to that, but it's worth a shot, right? It's worth a shot. Eli's still producing military as well. But MBL coming forward with more buildings. And Eli, that's my boy. Says, no mercy, no surrender. Yeah, don't give up. It's Regicide Rumble. It's not a Friday community game. It might not look good for you. But I, I, I want to see you go out fighting, you know? No mercy, no surrender. I like it. MBL is probably just like, okay. Just waste 10 minutes of our time, then. We just waste 10 minutes. We're going to kill him anyway. That's the worst MBL impression ever. However, Eli's king did actually un-garrison. So maybe he wasn't completely uh, joking with that. He's also making gates here. So Eli might actually give this one up, my friends. <laughs> I mean, if MBL sees this, MBL's going to go for it right away. <laughs> okay. I mean, hello? <laughs> Eli calls the GG. He gives it up. Yeah, he didn't want to continue to fight. I think he he realized he had been bested. Wow, what a game. MVL wins it. Wow. I'm I'm surprised because of how he opened it, you know? Remember, what did he say to Blue? He was like, We can be friends for now, but I have army I have defense prepared in case you're thinking about it, you know? But yeah, I mean, this game really opened up. With a pretty clear string of alliances over here. We had Capoch wanting to team with Low Elo Nobody, wanting to team with Levi, wanting to team with El Matador. And that looked really strong, especially when Blue wanted to kill Edub. Poor Edub, I feel bad for him. But what happened was Low Elo Nobody was like, he wanted to be on MBL's team, not Capoch's team. And when he backstabbed, it's as if, you know, as I describe uh, taking control of the game in terms of wh when you make the movements, when you attack. The whole Southern team was just immediately reactive, right? There was a lot of confusion. Gray comes in here. Teal is to show up. Red is to show up. And then as that happened, then blue and purple hit red and, and teal. And then they couldn't help Capoch. Capoch was actually kind of walled in here as well um, by Gray's walls. So honestly, low elo nobody needs to go to MBL needs to go to Eli, and needs to go to Sony Taprano right now and say, hey, I want 
That's right. I watched the rest of that game. I saw how much money you got from my decision. I want 10%. I'm not saying you should actually do this. I'm just joking. But like, seriously, though, <laughs> because what happens if Gray doesn't do that? I think that it's going to be really difficult in terms of player skill. I think we've got like a 3v3 that's much closer. The whole game changes. We'll see. Um, but I mean, it's impossible to say. You certainly look at this now if you're Sony Toprano. And Sony Toprano probably should have responded with, I like dogs. Instead, he started talking about the game. I mean, read the room, Sony Toprano. Come on, don't talk about the game when we want to talk about dogs. Score for NBL was insane all game. He does win this game. And he ends the game with 1,936 kills. Is that number the same here? It's not. Okay, because we restarted capture age. So we'll use this. Economically, Eli, he had a lot of gold. Honestly, just didn't really like the Sicilians. Also, what is this? Pippin Denpu. I'm okay. I'm going to decline. Thank you, buddy. Um... He had the resources. He had the macro. He had so much trade, which is perfect. But there wasn't too much that was exciting about the Sicilians beyond the fact that Cavalier could survive a couple extra hits from the Halps. So I, if he has Mongols there, if he has Celts there, if he has some other Civ, maybe he's able to combat that. I mean, to be honest, it's really hard to combat MBL with Halp Onager Civs. But yeah, that's a lot of stars there. MBL's just destruction. 306 buildings raised. His largest army was 146. Also, I loved MBL's ability to figure out the Diplo in that game. He really, I felt like, was growing into it as they went on. Um, and then probably the final thing to mention for MBL was that when he started to get raided, when he had like 8 or 9k gold and he could have been super confident, he could have said, hey, this game's easy, I've won it. He thought ahead, he added trade, he added more villagers, and then ultimately, after our, like five minutes, was able to push right back. So, GG.